So there are two main ways of saying how electrons are configured around the nucleus of an atom. And yes, you're going to need to know both of them. I'm actually going to start out with this box and arrow notation. That's what I call it. But uh, your textbook, Tro, calls it orbital diagrams. So box and arrow notation, orbital diagrams, it's the same thing. of saying how electrons are hanging out. To me, this one, box and arrow notation, you'll see what I mean, actually gives the most detail. And the other one is spectroscopic notation. Spectroscopic notation, a little less detail, easier to write. Um, and our textbook calls this SPDF notation. You'll kind of see why. Um, oh, I guess our textbook calls this electron configuration, otherwise known as SPDF notation. So let's start with the box and arrow notation. So as I've talked about already, boxes will represent orbitals and if we have um, several boxes kind of lined up in a row sharing um, uh, sharing even sides, adjacent sides, those are orbitals in the same subshell. Remember, it starts with letter D. What do we call those orbitals? We call them degenerate orbitals. So each subshell, if you're doing the box narrow notation, sometimes students don't take me seriously on this. This box narrow notation, you need to mark what your subshells are. Mark what your boxes are before you put your little electrons in there. And as I think I've mentioned before, we're going to use um, electrons are going to be represented using arrows. And remember we said if you put two electrons in the same box, one electron needs to be pointed up and one electron needs to be pointed down. You're going to see that here with the box and arrow notation. So um, the up arrow actually is a plus one half and that's a positive spin. The down arrow is a minus one half, m sub s value minus one half, and that's a, what we call a negative spin. Okay. And this last rule, unless you want to be a rebel, which you can be, um, if there's only one electron in a box, one electron in orbital, go ahead and, for just for kicks, give it um, an, a positive spin shown with an up arrow. So here we go. We're going to knock out hydrogen through beryllium with regard to electron configurations using the box and arrow notation. Now I hope we're all on the same page here. If all of these, if, if these elements are neutral, which they are, how can you know how many electrons to find homes for? It's equal to the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. And how do you know the number of protons? That's the atomic number. So hydrogen atomic one, atomic number one, we need to find homes for one electron. Dun, dun, dun. There's the one electron. Helium atomic number two. So the two electrons, it has two protons in its nucleus. If it's neutral, it has two electrons. And so the two electrons look like this. The first one to arrive with a positive spin, the second one with a negative spin. So far, so good. And this is kind of the building up method. So to me, if you have helium, which is two electrons, atomic number three, lithium with three electrons, all you got to do is basically make a helium electron configuration and add one more electron. There you go. Not too bad. Beryllium, atomic number four. So it looks like this. So you buy that. Welcome to electron configurations for elements, atomic numbers one through four. Let's go ahead and do a few more. Boron, atomic number five. So the five electrons look like this. One, two, three, four. And now, excited as we are, we get to put one electron in one of those three degenerate orbitals. Tola. Now carbon is the first element that actually we get something called, uh, it's on the next slide, called Hoon's Rule. So check this out for carbon. Carbon atomic number six, we need to find homes for six electrons. So we have to completely fill a subshell before we can go on to the next subshell. And I'll show you how these are actually increasing n. You'll just have to take my word for it so far. So one, two, three, four, five. And then for that sixth one, instead of sharing an orbital, we go ahead and scoot over to that middle orbital. Okay, that they're degenerate anyway, so they kind of spread out in the same orbital if, um, if there's room. So there we go. 
So carbon is an example of actually that sixth electron. Yeah, sixth electron, it scooted over. It didn't share an orbital with the fifth electron. It shared a degenerate orbital. Okay, so Huhn's rule says that uh, what carbon did was uh, we're filling. We, well, we're not going to fill it, but we only needed two electrons in that subshell. And the best way to do that is if you have electrons that are unpaired, and those unpaired electrons will be both pointed in the same direction, same spin. That's Huhn's rule. I call this the spread out rule. Okay, so electrons are going to spread out if they can. So let's go ahead and now that we know that, oops, sorry, um, a little bit more about Huhn's rule. Um, uh, paired electrons means that you have two electrons with opposite spins, of course, in the same orbital. Unpaired electron means that it, uh, you have one electron in a box, one electron in an orbital by itself. Okay, so after carbon we have nitrogen with seven electrons. So here we go, one, two, completely fill that one, three, four, completely fill the 2s. And now I need to find homes for three more electrons. And according to Huhn's rule, they're going to spread out just like that. Oxygen, atomic number eight, we need to find homes for eight electrons. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now I need four more electrons. All right, so I think of it this way. One, two, three. Now I need, I need to put my fourth electron in the 2p subshell. I'm not going to go on to the next subshell. So now it's kind of like if you have kids in your house and you have too many, you, have, you basically have more kids than you have rooms for them to each have their own room, somebody has to buddy up, okay? So I have eight electrons shown there. That's how their, their eight electrons around the oxygen atom are hanging out as they are in it, their ground state. Excellent. So fluorine, nine electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Got to buddy up. Eight, nine. Cool. Well, neon has ten electrons. Neon, we get exciting. Neon actually is at the end of the period. It is in group number, what group number? Group number eight. Exactly. So it ends up looking like this. Oops. Go. Ten electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And what's so exciting about neon is uh, that the rare gases are are important. The rare gases are basically the way other atoms want to be with regard to their electrons. So um, over here. Let's see, I'm going to be referring to this later. Do you see where, for neon, we have two, we have, uh, two electrons here and six electrons here. What's two plus six? Two plus six is eight. Actually, we're going to see with all of the rare gases, they have what we call a nice little eight, a nice little octet, okay, in their highest N. We'll, kind of sh we'll be talking about that later.